Hello and welcome to the Z Classroom video on duplicating with the move mode and extruding with the move mode. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the transpose line when in move to duplicate and extrude geometry. So we're going to start with a mesh that's the dog. In this mesh, we currently have no subdivision levels, but now what I'm able to do in ZBrush 4R2 is when I switch to my move mode by either clicking the W or clicking on the button above and drawing on an action line, I can now hold down my control key and click on the middle circle and begin to duplicate my dog. I can continue this process as many times as I want. So again, I'm holding the control key, clicking the middle circle and moving down line so that I can keep moving my dog. So let's take a look at how we can use this with a Dynamesh. Now with this Dynamesh selected, we're going to use this piece to duplicate several bolts along this metal plane. We're going to accomplish this by using an insert brush that we've already pre-created, which is our insert bolt brush. So let's start by drawing out our first bolt. So as we draw out our bolt, you're going to notice that once we let go, the plate is completely masked off where the bolts are not. We're going to switch to our move mode by clicking the W key, or you can click the move button up here, and draw out an action line. Once the action line is drawn out, I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the middle circle to just duplicate our bolt. Now you can also hold the shift key to keep the bolt aligned with the action line. So let's try that action again. Holding down the control key, we're going to click on the middle circle, move our bolt wherever we want, or even hold the shift key to move our bolt along the same line. To come out of move mode, I'm going to click Q, or you can click on the draw button. I'm going to clear my mask by holding control and dragging on an open space in our document, and I want to remesh at this point. So I'm going to hold down the control key and drag on the outside of the document to re-dynamesh this particular metal piece. Now when we're done, we have a plate with bolts on either side. So let's draw out another bolt and see how we can use the duplicate in a negative way. So once we've drawn out our bolt, you can see we instantly, of course, mask out everything but the bolt. I'm gonna turn on my poly frame mode by clicking Shift F, or you can do this also by clicking on the poly F button found here in the bottom right of the interface. You can see that the bolt I've drawn out is green and the other poly groups are different colors. I'm gonna switch back to my move mode by clicking the W key. I'm gonna draw out my action line again. I'm gonna hold down the control and alt key this time and draw out an instance of this bolt. You can see instantly this poly group is white whereas this poly group is green. So what this is going to do for us when we read Dynamesh, ZBrush is going to keep this bolt as an additive and it's going to make this bolt as a subtractive. Let's even move our bolt in space. So I'm going to draw out my action line, hold down my shift key and move this along the line of the action line so that the grooves of the bolt are actually intersecting with the geometry. So let's switch back to our draw mode by clicking Q. I'm going to hold down the control key and clear my mask by clicking and dragging on the canvas. And now let's read Dynamesh by again holding the control key and dragging on our document. And when ZBrush is completed, the Dynamesh, you can see that the bolt that was originally drawn out is staying as an additive. And the bolt that we used control and alt with has become a subtractive. And in fact, our ridges from the bolt are even found in the surface. So let's take a look at how we can also use extrude with the move mode. Now that we've taken a look at how we can use the move mode to duplicate geometry, let's take a look and see how you can use the move mode to extrude faces. Let's start really basic and look at our cube and then we'll move on to our Dynamesh. So what's key to extruding with inside ZBrush with the move mode is masking. So I would like to mask out just the front part of these faces so that I can extrude out of here. So I'm gonna turn off our perspective mode so I have no camera distortion and switch to our side view. By holding the control key and clicking anywhere in the document, I'm gonna draw out a squared mask. So now that we have the front face masked out, extrusion works by faces that are on mask. So I need to inverse my mask by holding the control key 
and clicking on our document. You can see here our mask has just been inversed. You can also accomplish this by going to our masking sub palette and clicking on the inverse button. So once I click this button, you can see my mask has inversed back and clicking again puts us back to the position where the back end of the cube is masked and the front part is unmasked. So the part that is unmasked is the section we'd like to extrude. So I'm going to switch to our move mode, draw out an action line, hold down our control key and click on our center circle. And you can see what will happen is ZBrush will instantly add an edge loop where the masking starts and allow us to extrude out the remainder faces. So again, I can hold down the control key, click on our circle, and we get an extrusion that can happen. We can even switch to rotate and put a slight rotation in this surface, then switch back to our move mode by clicking W or clicking on the button, holding down the control key and extruding out and begin to place this wherever we want. That's taking a quick basic look at using the extrude with move mode. Now let's take a look at how we can use this with our DynaMesh. Here we have our DynaMesh again, and if you notice, there are two subtools found within this piece. I'm gonna select the middle part, which is my engine or my fan, and I'd like to be able to fill out this space and use extrusion. So I'm gonna hide my other subtool by clicking on the eyeball and only look at this fan part or engine. I'm going to turn on my polyframe mode again by clicking Shift F, or you can click this button down here, which is Poly F, so that I can see my poly groups. By holding our Control and Shift key, I'm going to select this bottom part of the fan, which is a purple poly group. Now I only want to have just this round bottom ring here, so I'm going to shrink my selection. I can do this two ways. Underneath the visibility palette, I can click on Shrink, or as you see, I can just use Control Shift and S as my shortcut to shrink my selection. So I'm gonna hold down the control shift and click S so that I shrink my selection. Now I wanna mask off this ring. So I'm gonna hold down my control key, click on my document so I mask all. You can also accomplish this by going to your masking sub palette and clicking the mask all button. I want my whole fan to come back again. So I'm gonna hold down the control shift key. I'm gonna click on my document. As you see, my whole fan becomes visible again. I'm going to turn my polyframe mode off at this point. So I'm going to click my poly F button or click the shift F keys. I want to inverse my mask because the only thing I want to extrude is that bottom ring. Again, we can do this by clicking the inverse button or holding the control key and clicking in our document. Now that we have the top part masked off and this ring unmasked, I'm going to switch to my move mode, draw out an action line and begin to extrude. Again, we hold down the control key and pull out our surface. Now, if I wanna hold down the shift key, my extrude will stay along the line of the action line. So let's draw a little bit more here. Let's make another extrusion by holding our control key and drawing out and holding our shift key. I also wanna go under deformation and for this particular piece, I'm gonna actually stretch it out a little bit. So as you look from above, we have a wider base now. And let's extrude one more time by holding the control key, clicking on the center circle, and holding the shift key to keep it in line with the action line. Let's clear our mask by holding the control key and drag on the outside, switching to our move mode by clicking Q, and let's bring back that other piece to see our finished DynaMesh. So as you can see here, with just a few clicks, we've added a whole nother dimension to this piece using the move mode to extrude and using the move mode to duplicate. Thank you for watching this video and please continue to watch more Z Classroom videos on pixelogic.com.